Hey guys, my name is Ryan Central, and today we got the final bit of details when it comes to Borderlands' endgame. This came from PAX West, a panel with all sorts of stuff, Randy Pitchford doing magic again, so I figured I'd break down the main bits so you don't miss it. At this point we know exactly what we're doing in game in regards to the modes that we'll be playing. Of course we'll be replaying the story at high difficulties, farming bosses and raids both of which we could do in the old Borderlands games with the addition of the Proving Grounds which is a new game mode which you'll see on screen if you haven't seen it before and the Circle of Slaughter that was in Borderlands 2 is making a return with Mr. Tog. These are the four major modes that people are going to be playing but this was Gearbox's and Paul Sage's approach to Borderlands 3 Endgame with their biggest mission and task, replayability. So something kind of weird happened is we looked at the people who are currently playing Borderlands 2 for the inspiration for developing the Endgame. I think there's something like 2 million unique logins per day that we checked in June on a game that's 7 years old. So we looked at like what are, the, what are people like, what is it that's bringing them back? Repeatable gameplay, right? Big thing there, you get, you get new monsters, you never know what you're gonna get in the zone. You get advanced character growth. I think everybody knows about advanced character growth, and believe me, these things have meaning to what we're gonna talk about. Yeah. Uh, you have a good core gameplay loop, like everybody loves the shooting and everything else. And then finally, you know, one of the big things that uh, we are talking about is, you know, this advanced character growth uh, that we have. And so we've done a lot with our characters. Have you seen the four characters? Now we get to talk about uh, what's going to happen to them beyond uh, finishing the main story. I don't know if it was by accident or not, but I love the fact that Paul Sage listed advanced character growth twice on his list of four different things. I guess that just means that it's twice as important as everything else. So we have our content and they want us to replay these game mods over and over again. How do they intend to get people to do that? Well, it boils down to two major areas to make the game interesting and diverse. The first is Mayhem Mode. The panel was a bit rushed and scuffed, so I'm not really going to use any audio or explanations, but on screen is the modifier of what Mayhem Mode is. The devs said themselves that the numbers aren't legit that you're seeing on screen, but it at least gives you an example on what Mayhem Mode changes to the game. It increases your loot quality and the drop rate, I believe. It also increases the experience, iridium and cash drops that you get. But the catch is it increases the health, shield, armor of the enemies too. And I believe increasing their damage a little bit as well. If you still don't know what I mean, this is the Diablo Torment level system or Grandmaster systems in Anthem. You'll get to level 50, start at normal and then true Vault Hunter mode and then go into Mayhem 1, Mayhem 2 and then Mayhem 3, each of them increasing in the difficulty as you go through them. And I'd put some money on the fact that in the future with more DLCs being added, we will eventually get more Mayhem mods in the future, 4, 5 and 6 may be following down the line. But another pretty interesting and exciting addition to the Mayhem system as well as just the flat out stat increases are the affixes mentioned. These are additional perks that may be activated during your playthrough. Every time you enter the map, you will have some of these affixes enabled in your game, pretty much randomly. We'll read through a few examples. The first is bulletproof. Enemies take 50% less damage from normal bullets. You then have basically the same for incendiary, cryo, grounded must be shock. You also have enemies have a chance to reflect projectiles. Enemies take 30% less damage from critical damage. And as you can see with the menu icon on the right hand side, there's a lot of different mods that might happen to be in your Mayhem Mode game. Like Paul Sage said, every time that you go into a map, these will change. And Eva gave us an example on how this would look. On screen is the map showing that we're in Mayhem Mode level 1, about to do the Proving Grounds game mode that we've been showing on screen at level 30. In this Mayhem Mode, enemies have 15% extra health, 25 extra shield and armor. However, XP, Iridian and cash drop chance has gone up 200% and the chance of getting better loot has gone up 100%. The affixes or mods added onto this game mode are grounded where enemies take 50% less shock damage and also another unnamed one that increases the enemy's fire rate. I assume it's the case for Mayhem 1 that two affixes or mods are assigned to whatever you're playing. Whereas as you go into Mayhem 2 or 3, we might see 3 or 4 mods instead of 2. I'm not quite sure whether that's the case, but I can certainly see that being a thing. The higher you climb, the more chaotic this game mode will get. I do want to give my thoughts about this and Guardian rank towards the end of this video, but seeing as I just mentioned the Guardian rank, let's go over what that is too. Starting with what Gearbox had to say about them. 
Yeah, so Guardian rank is sort of similar to what we did with the badass rank from the last game, but the different there's some differences in that though. This time it unlocks once you beat the game. Um, I think we can skip ahead to a slide oh, that yeah, has Guardian rank on it, right? Like this is yeah. this is true Vault Hunter, but here's Guardian rank right yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. So, so right here, uh, you can see that this unlocks, and, and it's a little different than the than Borderlands 2. So, in this one, as your XP goes up, you get these tokens, uh, and then you can go in and you can spend them on the trees as they go through. So, uh, and what, and and again, this is you can do this infinitely. There's no there's no like there's no hard cutoff or anything. You your, can just keep going and going. To, your, to, your stats to, keep climbing. Yeah, and the more you build into certain trees, you get unique perks that go in ter in terms of those too. And you can kind of see some of this going here so this is obviously is the idea behind what's going to keep me coming back for proving grounds right i want to come back with my friends i want to keep running i want more loot i want more bat yeah, sure. so these are basically paragon levels from diablo this is a really important factor that i do want to touch on at least i think it's that it says it all unlocks once you beat the campaign and i believe it's done from just leveling as opposed to the weird challenges that you had to do in borderlands 2 such as killing a certain amount of monglets i don't know the reason why i mention this is because in baru's level 50 gameplay of amara which is max level might i remind you he's still gaining xp in the bottom on a purple bar the same color bar as the one that's in the guardian rank menu so i assume that's how it works the same way as the paragon system works within diablo from the looks of it, you can redeem tokens by improving stats on the left, as well as the talents on the right. I don't know if it's kind of a pick and choose thing going on, but the talent tree does include weapon and player skins, as well as some pretty strong perks to improve your playstyle. More quality of life stuff, but there are some really good talents in here too. Some examples are increasing your ammo pickup, improving fight for your life. But Salvador's overkill talent is in here for Flak as an example. So not only are they just quality of life stuff, you can still get some really strong stuff if you spec into these trees. I did want to mention that Gearbox has said in the past about improving and embellishing on current Vault Hunter skill trees, making them a bit more varied, as opposed to just focusing on adding new DLC Vault Hunters in the future. And I really believe that this is the way they're going to do it. I can certainly see when a DLC is added, and most people have unlocked all of these guardian rank talents that more get added into the future that you're gonna have to try and grind and get but these two systems are very reflective on how diablo works and their systems in the game which i think is a really really good sign like i said we'll mention it in a second now i want to go over anointed gear which i still think is a really cool addition matt cox mentioned this briefly with an example so here's what he said about it which is a brand new type of loot for borderlands 3. now that's not a new rarity type but when you come upon uh, some anointed gear, it's going to have special attributes uh, that coincide directly with player skills. So for this one in particular, this gun, the Searing Reflexive Ingwa, which I learned how to pronounce right before the show. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, on the action skill end, the next two magazines will have 50% additional bonus corrosive damage. So yeah, there's a lot of great fun that can come, a lot of great perks for uh, the uh, yeah, the player skills that'll happen when you find uh, you know an anointed shield or an anointed weapon or an anointed uh, grenade mod. And as the challenge keeps getting more challenging and challenging, it becomes a lot more important to find uh, anointed gear. I did want to add the audio that I had with Chris Brock when we did an interview last week at Gamescom. He also went into a bit more detail on what you can expect with Anointed Gear. This is what he had to say. At high enough levels, Anointed Gear has a chance to drop. And Anointed Gear... So think of it as kind of a, an addendum to rarity. Like So like, uh, if you have an Anointed Purple, it will have an extra part that like rolls on it that will give it an extra attribute. So okay. it's kind of like a like Legendary++. Plus Plus. It's like a Warforged. Similar sort of thing for like World of Warcraft. Uh, you know what? Not the. I don't. I don't oh, have okay. a big frame of reference. It's like. It's like. I've been playing since Burning Crusade, so yeah, it's been yeah. a while. Yeah. It's like an RNG thing where you just have a chance of getting that gear, but made a little bit stronger. Yes. What kind of it's extra kind of like perks that, yeah. do you have? Is it like to do with talents or? Um. So it's it's honestly it's mostly kind of like uh like legendary stuff like red text kind of stuff oh, like okay. it gives you like a whole different like attribute like it gives you like some pretty busted stuff honestly. And that's, this is a good way to get for it. This is a good way to get it, yep. I'd say these are very closely linked to Destiny Exotic perks, where they have an actual focus on your playstyle and your build, some of which even referring to certain talents and abilities, which really add a sense of depth 
and synergy in areas that you wouldn't see it beforehand. It also means that you're less focused on getting a specific legendary, whereas instead some of these gears could just drop randomly with anointed gear that might be a nice surprise. But of course you have a lack of player agency there with how you can't really focus on getting certain bits of gear that have these anointed perks on them. Might make it annoying, but not really a big deal. I think the option being there is really nice. Finally, DLC was touched on at the end. Two things will be coming soon after launch. The first is a Halloween seasonal event of Bloody Harvest, which includes a new event, maybe a new quest, and spooky activities. The other is a takedown, which sounds like a smaller raid update, which includes a new map area, new enemies, and of course a new raid boss with new loot. It seems that we'll be getting multiple takedowns in Borderlands' future, alongside these big DLCs. The first coming around winter time, that we'll get more information on next week on the 7th, I believe. I've always said that whatever FPS looter shooter can really take what Diablo has done for a game and put that into a looter shooter is going to be really strong. This is where I believe that Anthem would be a really strong success because it really seemed that they wanted to take a lot out of Diablo's book. Now I feel that Borderlands 3 has done a much better job already. Of course I haven't played, like the end game might still be bad at this point. I think it's silly to go into it assuming that it's going to be the best gameplay ever, but it's certainly making me feel a lot more confident about the end game now that you have these two very concrete systems from Diablo added in. Granted, I know a lot of people don't like Paragon levels in Diablo, but I think in the case for Borderlands 3, it's a nice addition. I really like that we're getting mayhem modes though, these just seem like difficulty modifiers, and it's a nice way to have people constantly going into the game to do the same old things, but have an element of replayability that keeps the gameplay spicy and exciting. I don't think it's going to take too long for people to get into Mayhem 3 doing a lot of damage, but then again you do have four Vault Hunters to play through the game with, and all of the different builds that you can run. Bear in mind that Chris Brock also said this about the term Seasons, which I think was worth highlighting again. Um, one thing that I did notice in terms of wording was the word Seasons, and as somebody that, we spoke a bit about Diablo last time that we were here, but like, was that... Are we going to see something like Seasons in Borderlands 3? Or was that just the terminology that you used for the VIP program specifically? It's, it's kind of just terminology that we're still, we're still working out, honestly. Like, I actually specifically don't want to call them Seasons because that has like a lot... That means something... It's a whole different... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it has some baggage that goes with it. And I... I uh, we're still kind of working on the naming conventions for that stuff. Okay. So we have some other stuff. That we uh, that called we we're calling seasons internally that uh, we're going to announce pretty soon. Actually. Oh, I see. Yeah, but that's not like a typical like a Diablo season or a no. Fortnite season kind no. of thing. Now they didn't mention this today, but I certainly worth think. But I certainly think it's worth just keeping on the top of your head. I don't necessarily know if that's what the takedowns are, but it sounds like that's how they're going to go about content in the future. Nothing like Diablo seasons as such. But if they can give people incentive to level up characters and go through the motions of game mode pluses and then mayhem modes, I think would be really good for the game as a whole. They didn't go into as much detail as I was hoping for, it was a really short section of the whole gearbox panel that was actually useful to be fair, but I still enjoyed what I heard and it's making me really excited for the game and being able to get into it at endgame. I know that's been a major focus from the channel and trust me, if I get my hands early on with the game that's the first thing that I want to show off is actual gameplay of Mayhem Mode and actual gameplay of the Circle of Slaughter, those kind of areas, because I think that this is the most important aspect of Borderlands 3 going forward, because Endgame is so important nowadays. But that's what I think about everything, really good panel, I would have preferred something a bit more intimate talking about all of these things, but I mean I'll take it. I hope you enjoyed the panel and the breakdown, thanks for watching, I'm sorry if this was a bit rambly and long, it's midnight as I recorded this so I am a bit tired, the excitement's keeping me awake at this point. But thanks for watching, take care, see you soon.